This is the Lakers Report by Chat Sports. Chase Senior here with you. No matter where you're watching or how you're watching, thank you so much for making today's show a part of your day. And there's so much to talk about on today's show pertaining to Russell Westbrook. What's the next domino to fall after he parted ways with his agent of 14 years, which is really rare, uh, rare when you talk about a relationship between an athlete and an agent. Oftentimes, these relationships don't last a decade and a half. So when a player moves on from an agent after that amount of time, Years go up for a lot of people in NBA circles. So according to The Athletic, the dynamic right now between Westbrook and the Lakers is becoming more and more untenable, meaning the Lakers could look to move off of him and Westbrook might not want to return to his childhood team because he grew up in the Los Angeles area and went to UCLA. People in NBA circles believe that Russ parting ways with his agent speaks volumes about him being hard to deal with. And if you've watched Russ the last couple of years, if you've listened to some of his press conferences, that's not surprising at all. And if the Lakers were to move on from Russ or if Russ demands a trade, this ain't good for the resume, folks. Can you imagine if you were looking for a new job and you went to your prospective new employer and you said, look, I want to work for you. Then they looked at your resume and you're like, uh, yeah, I've had to work for five different companies in five years. That ain't good. And they ask you about that. There really is no good answer to that question. Yes, upward mobility is a good thing, but that's not been the case for Russell Westbrook. In fact, he's going in a downward trajectory. There's also this that we'll cover later on on today's show. A new trade partner potentially entering the fold in the Utah Jazz. According to Jake Fisher of Bleacher Report, the Jazz could emerge as a destination to take on Russ's contract this upcoming year, base salary of $47 million, and in exchange, the Lakers could get back Patrick Beverly, which helps their timeline of trying to compete for a championship this year. We'll get to that at the end of today's show. First, though, this coming from The Athletic. The dynamic between the Lakers and Russell Westbrook is becoming more untenable with each passing week as the two sides seemingly head for an inevitable divorce. The most recent development... Westbrook splitting with his longtime agent who had represented him since he entered the NBA in 2008. Over that period, they were considered one of the stronger player-agent relationships in the league. And when it comes down to Westbrook and Los Angeles, I've said this really since the trade was made official in the lead-up to the NBA draft last year. Divorce is the best thing for the Lakers. I don't care about Russell Westbrook's feelings. LeBron's going to be 38 years old in December. I'm not sure how long Anthony Davis is going to be able to stay in his prime. In the last two years, he has been often injured. you got to compete for a championship this year. And in my opinion, Russell Westbrook, not a winning player, and he doesn't help move the needle to try to chase another championship, which we know LeBron James is trying to do right now because he cares about his legacy, how it stacks up with Michael Jordan, but also in this generation because him and Steph Curry currently tied with four rings apiece. Also, we talked about this on Sunday's show. Can we revisit the language from Russ's agent, Thad? Because I had said it was problematic, then all these articles started coming out saying that Russell Westbrook and his future in Los Angeles, it looks to be in question. I just think a lot of people tuned into the show will revisit that language because it's not trending in a good direction and it's not a good look for Russ and him trying to salvage this relationship with Los Angeles, but also with other NBA teams and repairing his image. But first, I want to hear from you, Laker Nation, in the comment section right now and get creative with this, right? The Russell Westbrook Lakers experiment has been what? Fill in the blank for me right now. More from The Athletic on this Russ situation and the dynamic that currently exists with the purple and gold. Thad Fouché hinted at Westbrook's lack of self-awareness regarding his situation. Westbrook hasn't accepted that his prime is behind him and the limitations in his game make it difficult for him to be a part of a team that has higher aspirations than losing in the first round of the playoffs. The subtext of Russ's agent's language was that Westbrook doesn't want to adhere to new coach Darvin Ham's vision for him. Westbrook becoming a defensive first point guard who plays more off ball than he did last year in any season of his career. This, of course, is not surprising as the Lakers used similar framing with Westbrook's projected role last year and it never came to fruition. Westbrook has no interest in role player tasks. This isn't surprising one bit. And when Darvin Ham had his introductory press conference, he said all these things about Russ. We can change the way 
that he has used and utilized. We can alter and tinker with his role. That's great when you say that, but is Russ willing to do that? And right now, the answer is no. And I talked about this also on Sunday's show. Did Thad realize that Russ isn't happy with the situation in Los Angeles and he wants to trade? And Thad, who had said to Adrian Wojnarowski he thought the best situation for Russ was returning to L.A., didn't want to put forward yet another trade demand. Russ is going to go down the way that he wants, and that's a problem because other teams aren't about that life. And other teams realize that Russ is past his prime. The last two years are certainly problematic, and it's going in a downward trajectory. And they understand that in order to take on Russ's contract and the player, he needs to make some sacrifices. But he's not willing to make those sacrifices. And you know what that reeks of? A guy who doesn't truly care about winning or doesn't care about winning basketball. You think Steph Curry would ever do this? No, he's the most selfless superstar ever. And that's a big reason why a lot of people, including me, have a problem with Russ. He's never changed, he's never evolved, and he's never going to because this is who Russ is. Partially, that's what's made him great, but that's also going to be a part of his downfall because other teams don't want to touch Russ, his personality, and his game, and his unwillingness to just adhere to how coaches want to utilize him considering his play slipping off the last couple of seasons. Do you want Russ on the Lakers next year? I have a feeling a lot of people who chime in into the comment section are going to type an N for no. I'm with you. If you disagree with me, type Y for yes and explain why you want Russell Westbrook on the Lakers in 2022-2023. Still to come on today's show, could Russ get traded to the Jazz so they take on his contract, especially if they trade away Donovan Mitchell? And if Russ is traded to Utah, could the Lakers get back Patrick Beverly? Juicy stuff right there. You know what's also juicy? Rumble. Unfiltered content and unlimited access to all of the best NBA content from us here at Chat Sports and sometimes exclusive Lakers content is put only on Rumble. Make sure you download the app and give us a follow, rumble.com slash Lakers TV. In addition to Lakers content, sports, news, politics, tech, and business, we continue to grow to the platforms that you as the people use. YouTube, Rumble, we're doing it all. So give us a follow. It's rumble.com slash Lakers TV. As for Russ, maybe getting sent packing to Utah, which would be hilarious in a couple of ways. People around the league, according to Jake Fisher of Bleacher Report, believe that the Jazz could take on Westbrook's expiring contract. People around the league also believe that the Jazz could be a home for Russ to really just go there so they can absorb that cap number, and they're willing to do that because they understand that he's going into the final year of his deal, and if they trade away Donovan Mitchell on top of Rudy Gobert, that money has to go somewhere, right? And Patrick Beverly could be the player that comes back to Los Angeles in a Russell Westbrook deal. As I said, this coming from Jake Fisher of Bleacher Report. In theory, if the Jazz in this rebuild, who just want picks, can get one or two picks from the Lakers and also get that expiring contract and buy Russell Westbrook out, that's another scenario there on top of him just playing out the remainder of his deal. It seems like a scenario people around the league believe to at least be plausible. If Donovan Mitchell is ultimately moved and the Jazz are just kind of a wasteland of young picks or young players and draft picks, hello Tank, there has been increasing talk around the league about teams wondering if the Jazz would be a potential landing spot for the Lakers to send Russell Westbrook to where they could potentially get Patrick Beverly and other salary back. And from a basketball team roster building standpoint, if the Lakers and Rob Palenka are able to get rid of that $47 million base salary, the distraction that is Russell Westbrook, and get back a more winning player in Patrick Beverly, who frankly fits better, and let's say the other move could be trading for Kyrie Irving, the Lakers go from having about a C grade throughout this offseason to having about a B grade. And the roster would improve tenfold. As for Beverly, you know what he brings to you on the defensive end of the floor? A guy who has been named to all NBA defensive teams, who had to play overseas in order to carve out a role in the NBA. And he's one of the best trash talkers in the sport and never backs down from a challenge. We're talking about one of the league's ultimate dogs and a guy 
who is a solid all-around player. Last year with Minnesota, nine points per game, connected on about 34% of his shots from downtown. Historically, throughout his career, the numbers have been around 37%. If he can get back to that, that's obviously more ideal. Four and a half assists as he can play a little point guard, play off ball as well, more than a steal per game. And even at his height, or lack thereof, about a block per game as well, which is impressive considering he's going up against some larger wings as well as forwards. And we've seen him match up against guys like the Joker because, again, Bev, he doesn't fear anybody in the NBA. If you had to pick one to occupy a roster spot on the Lakers, you go in Beverly or are you going Russell Westbrook? Let us know right now. PB for Beverly, RW for Russell Westbrook. Both guys are dogs. Both guys have that assassin-like competitiveness to them. I just think Beverly fits better on the Lakers, so I'm going PB right now.